one of the most enjoyable things about working at Valley Forge is that I actually get to dress up as a Continental soldier and introduce what life was like for a typical soldier here at Valley Forge to all our visitors. Uh, we try very hard to be as accurate as possible with the gear and equipment that we use. There are minor inaccuracies. My homespun hunting shirt, for example, is machine stitched. But the single most inaccurate part of this outfit is the person who's wearing it. I constantly have to remind visitors that the average Continental soldier was young, skinny, and clean shaven. And you will notice that I am none of those things. So I'm not exactly a perfect model for an average soldier. But that said, there's also no such thing as an average soldier. Every soldier here was unique and had their own background. Uh, the average age might have been in its early 20s, but the age range in the Continental Army was vast. There were some enlisted men here who were barely in their teens, serving as drummers and musicians. Uh, there were other enlisted infantry who were into their 40s or maybe even older, uh, who were still fighting in this army. Also, not all of the men who were here were men. We estimate that there were probably around 400 women in this encampment, usually the wives of the poorest soldiers. If you were a runaway indentured servant or a new immigrant or propertyless, uh, if your husband signed up and enlisted in the army, you would sometimes pack up your belongings, pack up your children and travel with the army from place to place. You had to be made of tough stuff to serve as a woman in this army in those days. But they would be working and laboring in this camp alongside the men in essentially non-combatant roles. So there were families encamped here at Valley Forge going through these conditions. Most of the people here were of English descent, but you had Irish, Welsh, Scottish, Scotch-Irish, Spanish, Portuguese, German, Polish, Almost every European ethnicity was represented in some way or another. You also had Native American groups like the Stockbridge and Oneida who were represented by troops here. This was an integrated army. There were freed black soldiers fighting in the same units as white soldiers. You're not going to see that again in the American army until the Korean War in the 1950s. And yet, at the very same time, there are slaves owned by civilian sutlers and owned by officers who are working for their masters while their masters are fighting for liberty and independence. In other words, every class and category of person that existed in America at that time was represented by somebody who was here in this camp. And they all had to work together to survive. One of Washington's greatest challenges of this war was to take what was essentially a coalition army that he first takes command of up in Boston and turn it into an American army. And that was an ongoing challenge throughout this war. 